Good morning, I'm Rinda. I'm Jim. We're Hardiness Approach. We are going to talk to you about one of our most favorite items for homesteading and gardening. This is called a garden bag and it actually is... What do they call them? They are. See, they garden say. pots. Garden pots. Garden fabric pots. These are called garden fabric pots. The brand is 247 Garden. We started using these. Do we have a link to this in our show we notes? We do have okay. a link to this. When did we start using these? A couple years ago. A little over two years yeah, ago. We, we were away from our Oregon when, homestead and we didn't have a place. It that, was when we were looking. And we were t in temporary situation and so we needed something that could work where we were and go with us when we went. And it came with us. <laughs> we used them last year and we have bigger ones, which we will show you before this video is over. The bigger ones don't have the handles, but we did grow eggplants in them last year and we have our elderberry plants growing in them right now until we can get them planted in our permanent home. Stead. Our permanent home stead. Instead. Instead of here. Yeah. <laughs> So Jim, why don't you show them what we've got down there? Okay. The beauty of these is that you can just pick them up and carry them somewhere to a warmer place if you need to. This, as you can see, is meant and it's coming out from last year. So this was full like this last year and then we cut it down and this year it's coming back. This one over here was rosemary we didn't cut it back we were supposed to we're just going to see if it comes back because they say it will but we didn't cut it in the winter we're, we're concerned that we let it get too cold and too dry so we'll probably pull it up and put another rosemary in there these are little sages that i just had grown from a seed they're my little babies and um i'm filling this pot full of sage Why do we like these, Jim? Well, we like them because you mentioned a couple of things. During cold times, we can easily pick them up and put them in Demonstrate. warmer places. So you just, you know, an easy pickup. Even when it's full of water, uh, maybe, well, when it's really wet, it's harder, it's heavier. But why would, why would you do that, so? Yeah, so you, you let it be somewhat dry, but you can move it to where it's warmer. Uh, you can put them, you know, you can move them around. I mean, if, if you're in a situation to where your space for sun is only sunny part of the day and you have another location that's only sunny the other part of the day, you can actually, to be a big hassle, but you can move them. <laughs> I mean, they need sun, and that way you can keep them in the sun all day. Well, one of the... Why else do I like them? Well, one they of the, work. They work. <laughs> one of the reasons that we are using them is so that we live in a small space right now. We live in an RV. Many of you live in RVs. Some of you live in, in an apartment with a little patio and or a home with a small patio. They're perfect for that because they allow you to be able to grow and still have them. So we are putting herbs in ours around our trailer so that it becomes like the little kitchen garden that we can just walk right out and not have to walk over to the other part of the farm and right, get, get our right. items. So they're close. Yeah. So we have great big ones. So Jim, if you want to take that off, we'll show them the big one. And this is our elderberry plant. And then these little tiny ones that you can see that they're coming up are the elderberry sticks that Jim went up on the mountain over there in those mountains. Do you want to show those mountains? <laughs> and brought them back. And so what we're doing here is we've had them in water and now they're in here and they're going to sprout on the bottom and then we'll take them and put them where, where we want them permanently. We're going to put one in here. One, one in here. So these tomato plants, they look like they're in Bonnie plants, but I actually saved these from last year and just put my little tiny seeds. I started these from seedlings. Um, they are from territorial seeds because that's the only place that I could get them during COVID. And that can't get any there now. 
and uh, Jim is going to plant one. And the we're, reason we're doing this is because it's not quite time to plant them out in the garden. And we have... We wished it was time, but it's still having some cold nights. This. We have a lot of these. Yes. Like we have 25 of these. And so we're going to try a couple of them. You want to go down and do this one down here? Yeah, let's go do that. A, we're going to do a couple of them in these containers. Because last year we didn't have luck with growing these in there, but we have some theories about why. And why is that? Well, we don't think we had them, uh, the, the drip system we were using wasn't dripping quite enough, yeah, we think. Yeah, I think they got dry. And I think, I, I think that they may not have had enough nutrients as well, just based on what we did and didn't, didn't do. Stand up. <laughs> so now we've planted two tomato plants and we're gonna water them and we've got three more plant bags right there and another one around the corner. And so we're just going to keep putting herbs in them and that makes them so convenient. A couple years ago when we originally used these bags we made a video and we still have people watching those and commenting on them so we felt we needed to do a bit of an update uh, that we're continuing to use them and some of the lessons learned and new ideas that we have about how to use them but uh, they're still valuable they're still wonderful and we still recommend them we'd like to clarify that when we were making this video before we were planting these in the snow and so we were making them so that they could come in the house and we put a, a tray underneath them. So in the house it caught the water because yeah. that's one thing we didn't mention this time is when you water them if you get too much water it drains down through and it's able to come out the bottom of the bag so it doesn't set and pool and, and make that bottom of the pot kind of problem with too much moisture. That said because they drain so well you have to have a constant supply of water and that's where we're thinking we went wrong is that we had the drip system for these combined with the drip system for the garden and the it wasn't it was not doing it frequently enough to keep yeah. it moist yeah so one additional uh, comment that I would like to make because of comments we get from the other video is you will see me sprinkling cinnamon into the top of the dirt and somebody said, what are you sprinkling and why? <laughs> and I says, well, I'm sprinkling cinnamon in there. And you know how you get little ground gnats, dirt, uh, soil that gnats? That fly all over your all house. All over your house when you are growing food inside. Well, cinnamon is a natural... Um, Deterrent. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things that you can put in there. So that's why we're putting cinnamon in ours in that video. If you are interested in buying any of these 247 garden fabric pots, we have a link below and it would just give us a tiny bit of money if you buy them through us through Amazon. We love them and I do not even remember how much they cost, but I don't I know they're not cost they were reasonable. prohibitive they were and reasonable. these last over and over and over. At the end of the season, if you want to change out the soil, you just dump it out. Um, you can wash them all out so they're clean, dry them for the winter if you don't want to use them, fold them up and pull them back out. They are a felt. Now when she said fold them up, yeah, they don't unlike fold, a fold. pot that's large and you have to have a big space, you can see this There's is three, three bags. Three bags. Okay. So minor space if you need to store them. Yeah, they're wonderful for that. Yeah. I forgot all about that part. But it's, it's, a, it's a heavy felt. Yeah, we've never had one tear, rip, nothing i'm sure they have a lifetime and, and, and we let, haven't reached it and let me just add one additional comment when we were in missouri we had bought at baker's creek um a fig tree and we were told that in missouri and we've since been told that they can set out but we were told when we purchased it that they had to be outside during the summer and spring and summer and fall and brought into the garage during the winter so we put one in one of the large pots and Jim made a little um, platform on wheels that we were able to push it out and that way we could move it around and it didn't just turn the grass yeah. bad. We don't know if it's still living, we left it there. But um, anyway, it was blooming when we left. 
yep. and for the next year after keeping it in the garage the whole year. So that's another way that you can do larger pots is just make a cart that it rolls on and yep. that worked. Thank you for joining us today. It's beautiful spring here and we're enjoying the sunshine. We hope you are too. See ya.